Hello everyone, welcome to IS Baba. Friends, uh, the prelims 2021 question paper is out and most of the students you are having so much of hue and cry and but obvious, uh, if we have the computers, if we have websites, if we have books, everyone can do that, everyone can do uh, search the answers and then hit it. But within the examination constraints, how to hit a guesswork and with the minimum knowledge that every normal aspirant has how to come out with the best possible answers and how to grab the maximum marks. So, that we are going to study now. So, the approaches, guessing strategies and our thought process in the prelims examination. So, all those things we are going to give the maximum importance, not the websites, not the links and nothing about the additional study material or 5 newspapers or 10 books. So, nothing of such sort. So, with a given resource of we will approach, we begin that. Firstly, the question number 1, the governor of Reserve Bank of India is appointed by the central government, first statement. Second one, certain provisions in the constitution of India give the central government the right to issue the directions to the RBI in public interest. Then the governor of RBI draws his power from the RBI Act. So, here friends, there is nothing present in the constitution regarding RBI. So, there is no article at all regarding RBI in the constitution. Yes, we know that. So, I suggest you to along with Lakshmi Kant or any other book or any other notes. Yes. So, have a read of P. M. Bakshi, the raw constitution. So, that would be very much helpful. Yes. So, in this article, this, this are the clauses present. So, do that. So, here we are eliminating 2 and if we eliminate 2, then only C 1 and 3 will be remaining. So, do not waste time in analyzing all the statements. Once you have eliminated, move on, save time. Then come to next with reference to the casual workers employed in India, consider the following statements. So, all casual workers are entitled for employees provident fund coverage. Then all casual workers are entitled for regular working hours and overtime payments. And then the government can by a notification specify that an establishment or industry shall pay wages only through its bank account. Yes. So, friends here, although the keywords like all are present, you should not take their literal meanings because go with the ethical judgment. So, ethical judgment is one guessing strategy which you have to adopt. Yes. So, here the provident fund, it is a progressive clause. Yes. So, we want maximum number of workers, be it casual, permanent, non-permanent, freelancers, whoever it might be. So, we want them to come under this provident fund net, so that they will save some money for their difficulty times or after for the aftermath of their retirements. Yes. So, that is why the, when this is a progressive clause, then no government can stop someone from being entitled. So, that is why all are entitled. And the second one is also a progressive clause. So, there has to be a minimum working hour. So, after that you have to pay over time. So, just because they are casual workers, you cannot make them work 24 into 7 and pay only for 8 hours shifts. Yes. So, all are entitled for overtime payment if they are made to work over time. So, be it P1, uh, be it a district collector for that matter. Yes. And then third one. The government can by notification specify that an establishment or an industry shall pay wages only through the bank account. So, the online bank transaction. So, that is also a progressive clause. So, that looks into the taxation issues. So, we can give in cash payments, but what about the company's taxation? What about the labor's income tax? So, all those things will matter. So, that is why all are progressive clauses. So, go ahead and hit them. So, here we are applying for one judgment that is ethical judgment. So, make, make sure that that ethical judgment you will adopt in your guessing strategy. Then coming to next one. So, I will write here the ethical judgment E j. Okay. Then which among the following steps is most likely to be taken at the time of an economic recession. So, now the recession is going on. Yes. So, as per the question, not uh, literally. So, even literally also due to COVID-19. And now, in order to come out of that recession, 
the companies and the corporates they require capital so that they will restart the business so we have to infuse as and much capital into the companies yes and even people they have uh, come out of the jobs many have lost their jobs they have lost their businesses due to lockdown etc so they also need money so unless they have money the demand can't be triggered so to trigger business activity and to uh, trigger the demand from the people we need to infuse money so make sure that at the very first stage infusion of money will keep in your brain now cut in tax rates accompanied by increase in interest rates so cut in tax rates but obvious it will infuse some money into the economy yes but however increase in interest rates sucks away the economy so here there is a positive effect and a negative effect both are there we will keep then increase in expenditure on public projects so here we are only infusing the money yes only positive is there yes and then increase in tax rates accompanied by reduction of interest rates so here increase in tax rate is negative effect and reduction is positive effect so both are there then reduction of expenditure so here only negative effect so here which is the best possible so here both negative positive are there here only positive is there so we can take this as the probable answer so friends for conceptual questions so don't go for guessing strategies all those things conceptual questions should be the easiest ones for a upsc aspirant who has worked hard so factual questions the luck matters there so you have an obligation that from where the source from which source the question has been picked up from the same source you have to attempt but here it is not the case here it is like you have to go with the analysis of the concept only then come to next so friends keep a track of how many we are attempting so even i will keep the track here as well then consider the following statements other things remaining unchanged market demand for a good might increase if so market demand will increase if price of its substitute increase price of its complement increases then the good is an inferior good and the income of consumers increases then its price falls okay so again it is a conceptual question between the complements and the substitutes so go with examples and once again when you hit the concepts you have to go with the evidential base so when you are hitting one option a strong evidence a strong proof that conviction should be there in your brain so firstly we take one substitute so substitute might be tea and coffee yes and then one more substitute might be sorry then we take the complement so complement is pen and a refill okay so now we start analyzing the things the price of its substitute increases so now if the price of tea increases then people will stop drinking tea or the number of people drinking tea reduces they will come to coffee then the demand of coffee coffee increased yes the demand of coffee increased when the price of tea increased then the price of its complement increases so for example if the refills price increases then people will stop buying this pen the demand for this pen decreases yes so if the refill is costly pen will also be costlier because the same refill we are going to put into that pen then so second one is not an option because if the refills price increases the demand for pen decreases then if the good is an inferior good and income of the consumers increase for example you take the normal brown bread so brown bread we consider as inferior good now if you start earning more and more now the demand for brown bread decreases and you will go for multi grain bread even i didn't eat what is multi grain bread but a student taught me that it is one superior good i don't know how superior it is okay so here again when the income increases the demand for inferior good decreases not increases then it price falls so but obvious a simple one if the price of something falls the demand will increase yes so here the 1 and 4 these two can be the probable options so likewise you can go ahead so whenever conceptual questions are there they will be easier ones so hit them then come to next with reference to 
we will wash it okay with reference to the urban cooperative banks in india consider the following statements so here they are supervised and regulated by local boards set up by state governments they can issue equity shares and preference shares then they were brought under the purview of banking regulation act through an amendment in 1966 so friends all are factual question now the question goes to a moderate to difficult level yes so now again start anal analysis so first one they can sorry second one they can issue equity shares and preference shares so this is a progressive clause so this we can go with our ethical judgment see friends any bank any cooperative sector any corporate sector even for that matter if it is willing to issue shares and have its own capital then it means that it is not depending on the government funds yes so an abad and all they need not uh, fund this if they are going for self funding so it is always welcome that if they issue shares and preference shares then but obvious government's burden will be reduced yes so nothing of such will be stopped yes so we take this as the correct option so wherever 2 is there so b and d only in these two two are there okay so 2 and 3 only and 1 2 and 3 only so now we have to choose whether one is correct or not only this is remaining so how to do that so see the statement they are supervised and regulated by local boards set up by the state governments so here that local boards is a very very generic term yes and here for a matter of fact here we can see that these urban cooperatives are regulated and supervised by registrar of cooperative societies yes so that registrar of cooperative societies is not given here a local board is given yes so some uh, economists they say no they are regulated by rbi so these are cooperative banks they have multiple regulators yes so we take it as a correct statement but we don't consider it under our, our evaluation so we take that one question we have left it okay but in the exam everyone will do the same but when upsc's official answer key comes see what this this might be correct because the registrar of cooperative societies is nothing but a local body yes and they are set up by the state government because these are the cooperative societies under the state cooperative societies act yes so we will see the result later so this question we will keep as pending yes so remember this one one we have left then coming to next Indian government bond yields are influenced by which of the following? Yes. So actions of the United States Federal Reserve. So if the Federal Reserve reduces its interest rate or increases its interest rate, so then what obvious our uh, investors they will fly there and come back again. So if they are are uh, if they are getting more interest there, what obvious they will fly there. If they are getting more interest here. they will come back but obvious it will be influenced then actions of reserve bank of india if reserve bank of india if it reduces now the government bonds interest rates so then what happens most of the people who are investing in our private bonds they will shift to government bonds and if rbi rises then they will shift back to private bonds and then inflation and short term interest rates so again the short term interest rates like kisan vikas patra national savings scheme and all if their interest is rising then again people will move towards them so it is all about market yes so in market everything is interlinked we cannot say this will not be interlinked at all yes so here advantage of minusculity so i call it advantage of minusculity that is even 1% of effect is there then that statement stands to be true upsc can't say that it will be false for an absolute 100% yes even 0.1% if it is uh, linked then it would be true that is why we take d as the option yes then we move to the next one consider the following foreign currency convertible bonds and then foreign institutional investment with certain condition global depository receipts then non resident external deposits so which of the above can be included in foreign direct investments 
So, friends, this is a factual question. So, this is given in the RBI website. So, I have brought the pictures of RBI website. So, here see the global depository receipts are considered as the FDI. Yes, and then here if the FPI is increases to 10 percent or more than uh, 10 percent of the total paid equity, then but obvious it can be considered as FDI. Then here we have FCCBs. So, FCCBs to be issued will have to conform to the foreign direct investment policy and that policies will be considered as FCCBs. So, this is a factual statement. If you think in the conceptual terms, you will not get the answer and again you will have to be thorough with the RBI website. So, again it is a difficult question, we are going to leave this. So, two questions we have left. So, have a count of it. Okay. So, make sure that as a preparation part, you will have one week one website program. So, every week you will take one website. Today RBI, tomorrow Ministry of Finance, then day after tomorrow Ministry of Home and see what are the things going on there what are the latest circulars coming from there. So, after government websites, you go for environment and science and tech websites. We can go for UNEP for one day, World Wildlife Fund the other day, yes, and see what are going on. Or if you come across any unique uh, current affairs events from any current affairs materials of any institutes. So, have a habit of searching it in the website and surf that site also, yes. So, we have the R2 code then we have the carbon common metric etcetera. So, from where these questions have been picked up. So, go to that websites and see those websites. So, do this program one week one website minimum three questions you will get if you are lucky is good yes even if you are lucky is bad one question you will get anyhow yes. So, nothing worked hard will go in vain. So, do that one week one website and we are not attempting this, but our suggestion is this is a factual question not a conceptual question I have brought you with evidence. Now, come to next one consider the following statements the effect of devaluation of a currency is that it is necessarily. So, it improves the competitiveness of the domestic exports in the foreign markets then increases the foreign value of domestic currency then improves the trade balance yes see now again you consider with the example. Now, for 1 dollar for 1 dollar we will write it neatly see say some 60 rupees is there we will devaluate it we will devaluate to 70 rupees yes. So, now when we sell 1 pen of rupee 1 dollar Yes. So, 1 dollar means a 60 rupee pen we are selling. So, when we sell 60 rupee pen, yes, earlier we used to get 1 dollars and now when the currency is devalued, the same 60 rupee pen will be sold in 0 0.9 dollars to them. Yes. So, for us now 70 means 1 dollar, but 60 means somewhere approximately 0 0.9 dollars. So, in the international market our pen became cheaper and our competitiveness increased. Yes, I hope you have understood we have devalued the dollars uh, uh, rate from 60 to 70 and earlier if we have sold 60 rupee pen to 1 dollar and now the same will be sold at 0.9 dollars again now the competitiveness decreased then increases the foreign value of domestic currencies. Now, it actually decreased the foreign value of domestic currency. Now, the dollar became more valuable it is 70 rupees yes, but rupee lost its value yes. So, whenever we devaluate the word itself shows that devaluing means we are devaluing we are degrading ourselves yes. So, this cannot be this can be and then improves the trade balance. So, friends here it necessarily improves the trade balance it necessarily it need not improve the trade balance because consider we are an importing nation yes. So, we are not doing so much of exports at all, but now 
when 90 percent of our trade is on the import side, then if you devalue currency, then something if you purchase for 1 dollar, something if you purchase for 1 dollar, instead of giving 60 rupees, you have to end up giving 70 rupees. Yes, now the trade balance it worsens, it does not improve. So, trade balance improves only if you are an exporting nation. So, that is that is why this is not necessarily true. So, 8 1 a 1 only. So, this is the formidable option. Yes. So, again a conceptual question hit with an example like this spend some time here, but be accurate. Then coming to next which one of the following effects of creating a black money in India has been the main cause of worry to the government of India. So, here black money is nothing but the money where the tax is not paid. So, we will look for those. So, before going to the alternatives and confusing yourself. So, have a conceptual clarity and have a definition of the question and summary of the question in your own terms. Now, we look for taxation. Diversion of resources to the purchase of real estate and investment in luxury housing. So, the is this the uh, reason for government's worry? I do not think so. Then investment in unproductive activities and purchase of precious stones, jewelry, gold, etcetera. Then large donations to political parties and growth of regionalism. So, if the parties are getting fund, if regional parties are getting even national parties will also get okay, loss of revenue to the state exchequer due to tax evasion. So, this is why government is fearing. An easy question do not spend more time here by confusing yourself. Yes, a conceptual one. So, we had spoken about taxation, the tax evasion and the tax loss of revenue due to tax evasion came, hit it and move ahead. Then come to next, which one of the following is likely to be the most inflationary in its effect? So, which causes more inflation? So, repayment of public debt. So, if the public debt might be we have a government has taken a, a debt in the market, share market, capital market, etcetera. So, repaying them will it causes inflation. So, it might not cause inflation because earlier government used to spend yes, but now government did not spend it is giving back the money to the public yes. So, what was going to be spent here is now spent here no additional inflation taking place yes. So, I have taken from the people and I was about to spend but I do not want to spend here, I gave back to the people. So, what I was uh, creating the inflation that the people are creating now, additional inflation nothing. Okay, then borrowing from the public to finance a budget deficit. So, budget deficit is there and borrowing from the public, yes. So, when I borrow from the public, then public liquidity will be reduced and the inflation decreases because the public liquidity increases demand and that gives rise to demand pull inflation. So, this actually reduces not increases. Then borrowing from the banks to finance a budget deficit. So, what do these banks do? They will give to the people and these people will cause inflation, but instead of giving to the people, bank is giving to me that is to the government. Yes. So, no additional inflation going on. So, what people used to do now? the government will do from the same channel that is bank. Yes, the same effect is going there here. Then creation of new money to finance a budget deficit. Yes, so already we took loan and we spent it to the people and now we have some loan here. That loan we are repaying by creating additional money. So, we are not sucking from anywhere. So, in all other alternatives either we used to suck from uh, others and give it to others but here we are not sucking from anyone, we are adding more to the economy. So, most maximum inflation will be there, creation of rupee. Yes, so there are rumors like Modi had printed uh, more notes, that is why uh, all prices have increased. So, nowadays gas uh, uh, 2000 rupees per cylinder in black, okay, not in white. Okay. So, uh, cooking oil 200, 250, 300 rupees. So, now, uh, people are suffering and they have rumors like this, that is why the question is being asked. So, we do not worry about rumors, but the question was genuine. Then come to next, the money multiplier 
Indian economy increases with which of the following? Again, friends, a basic NCRT. So, money multiplier effect is given in NCRT with diagram. That is, money multiplier happens when more and more people, when they start depositing and retrieving from the banks. So, when I take 1 rupee from uh, Reserve Bank of India and when I keep it to other bank, then other people they take it from the SBI and keep it to other banks. So, we have to deposit and withdraw that banking system should be increased for money multiplier effect. So, go and read all NCRTs so that you will have a command on concepts and basics. Yes. So, here increase in the banking habit of the people. So, if the banking habit is increased, they will deposit and withdraw often and but obvious they will be having the more multi money multiplier effect. Again, answer C is the correct option. Then come to next. With reference to Indian economy, demand pull inflation can be caused or increased by which of the following. So, again demand pull inflation means you are giving more money to the people and again demand increases, liquidity increases and demand increases and as a result of that the inflation is rising. So, expansionary policies, yes. So, in the expansionary policies, we are giving them free food, free money, yes, PM Kisan Yojana, Garib Kalyan Yojana, etc. So, that causes what obvious demand pull inflation. Then fiscal stimulus, yes. So, when someone is in loss, we are giving money to them, we are giving fiscal stimulus to banks, fiscal stimulus to corporates and fiscal stimulus to common people. Again, it causes demand pull inflation. Then inflation indexing wages. So, here friends, when the inflation and the wages are linked, so when there is more inflation, wages will be reduced. So, as wages are reduced, then but obvious the demand will reduce and demand pull inflation will come down. So, the problem is that as and when inflation increases, our wages are not linked and our wages are not indexed for inflation. That is why inflation will be going on increasing because people will be having more money. So, they will purchase even if the rate is higher. So, that causes further rate increase. Again, this cannot be possible. And higher purchasing power. Yes. So, if we have more and more purchasing power, then but obvious the demand will be more and the demand pull inflation increases. Yes. This can be again a formidable option. Then rising interest rates. So, if we raise the interest rates, so people who have taken loan, their money will be sucked up and people who borrow, they will not spend in common goods, they will invest because they are getting more interest. So, both the ways the demand pull inflation is coming down. Yes. So, I increased the interest from 2 percent to 3 percent. So, if I had taken loan from you, instead of giving 200 rupees every month, I am giving you 300 rupees. Yes. So, now by the very thing that we are getting 300 rupees, you will also having more interest to give to some others. So, you will not spend in common goods. Yes. So, this cannot be an option. So, 1, 2, 1, 4. But obvious A will be the correct option. So, again a basic question. So, basics you have to be very, very thorough friends. Then come to next with reference to India, consider the following statements. First one. Retail investors through DMAT account can invest in treasury bills and the government of India debt bonds in primary market. So, this was in current affairs again. So, here not the guesswork. So, hard work is necessary. So, earlier we had the primary markets and only these primary markets were selling government bonds. So, who are the participants? Only the corporates and the banks. Now, Modi government came up and it started the NDS system that is negotiated dealing system order matching. So, this website will give an opportunity for the common man to buy the government bonds even in the primary market. Yes. So, both statements they stand to be correct. Then the central depository service limited is jointly promoted by the Reserve Bank of India and Bombay Stock Exchange. So, friends here 1, 2 and 3 options are not there in the first place and we have absolute conviction that both are correct. Yes. So, you can go for 1 and 2 only and as a matter of fact check, you can also see like Bombay Stock Exchange is a private body. 
why it will interfere in government bonds yes so some government or government partially owned body will be uh, taking part right so make sure that you will fact check likewise and have a confidence that you have it a correct option then come to next so with reference to water credit consider the following statements so now again we came purely to the factual one okay so it puts microfinance tools to work in water and sanitation sector see friends here something like water credit or something like right to city so all these are no a awareness creation clauses yes so they will be having various uh, plan of actions so they will be giving money to common man they will be giving money to microfinance micro they will be giving money to startups so various plans of action will be there various channels of implementation will be there so we cannot say that the microfinance tools are not used in water credit so the very word itself says about credit so we cannot say that microfinance are not given the credit so what for what reason it will be a progressive clause if they are not including microfinances and they are including only big banks yes so that will become a capitalism a racialism or even anti nationalism to say in hardcore sang parivar words okay then it is a global initiative launched under the aegis of world health organization and world bank so here upsc has great instincts to give wrong statements so instead of the proper institute so it can twist and give some other institutes so here there are least chances of giving wrong statement but in two there are more chances of two becoming wrong so we will keep two under doubtful position then it aims to enable the poor people to meet their water needs without depending on subsidies again a very very open clause a very very progressive clause there are no chances of going wrong so what is the negation of this statement it cannot be like it doesn't aim for the poor people to meet their water needs so that is absurd yes so here also it will give loans to big banks not to microfinance banks so that is absurd okay but here instead of who some other organization comes the statements stands to be meaningful so one and three only we will hit so friends in this just look at the options so any one you need to eliminate option itself is showing that show me by eliminating any one so see any one doubtful thing and take the risk here go and hit one and three only so don't miss it out here you have to spend some risk and you have to make some efforts here okay so this we are getting then coming to next in india the central banks function as the lender of last resort usually refers to which of the following so why the rbi is called the lender of last resort yes so someone who is in trouble if you lend and when others are making excuses if we go and help then we become lenders of last resort so we see the lending to trade and industry bodies when they fail to borrow from other sources yes so here if only all the banks are helpless only then rbi will come so other sources means it is a very generic term so but obvious if all the banks have turned down their requests then rbi would have become the lender of last resort and moreover we haven't seen rbi lending to any companies so why will rbi lend to any companies yes it will lend to banks and it will ask the bank to give it to the company yes so after exhausting all sources so it has to exhaust all the banks and especially the scheduled commercial banks so again this is not a formidable option providing liquidity to banks having a temporary crisis yes so whenever banks have crisis they have no one to go yes so they have to approach that last person that is last resort rbi so this statement is very true very specific and then lending to governments to finance budgetary deficit so friends when government is having budgetary deficit so it can finance from any sources it can borrow from external ones it can print money or it can raise money in the capital market so 
government is not in the crisis now. So, government need not approach RBI. So, there is no so much of dearth. Yes. So, again here that last resort word is not coming. So, only 2 can be the formidable option. So, we are going with 2. Again, see the tone of the keyword last resort. Yes. And then start analysis. Then coming to next R2 code of practices constitutes a tool available for promotion promoting the adoption of. So, here friends R2 R2 means something RR. Okay. So, again a difficult question if you have not read it in current affairs it would be very difficult. So, first one environmentally responsible practices in electronics recycling. So, here we have R and R we will keep it then ecological management of wetlands of international importance under Ramsar convention. So, here Ramsar is having one R, but one more R is missing sustainable practices in the cultivation of agricultural crops in degraded lands. So, nothing like R is coming environment impact assessment in exploitation of natural resources. So, natural resources is having one R, but not so substantial. So, but obvious this will become an answer, but we are not going to hit it. Yes. So, most probably we are going to leave it. Yes. Under the examination concern, just make some efforts to think on these lines. Yes. So, this takes some courage to think like RR and responsible recycling. So, we will leave this. So, our total questions we left added up to 3. We will calculate that. We will keep this as it is. So, this can be a formidable answer, but as of now we leave. Then, why is there a concern about copper smelting plants? So, first option they may release lethal quantities of carbon monoxide into environment. Then, so this lethal quantities, so this is bit extreme, we will see. Then, copper slag can cause the leaching of some heavy metals into environment. So, some heavy metals can leach. So, some is a moderate word. So, this can be formidably correct statement. Then, they may release sulfur dioxide as pollutant. So, even small amount of sulfur dioxide if they release, it is a release itself. We consider it as the correct one. Again, friends here, the lethal quantities, it sounds to be extreme, but conceptually speaking, even a small amount of carbon dioxide is a lethal. If you may inhale small amount of carbon dioxide, that itself is sufficient for your death, for causing carboxyhemoglobinemia. Yes. So, even if lethal quantities are given, the lethal quantity itself is not extreme because the carbon dioxide, its monoxide itself is a very poisonous gas. So, now we have an ambiguity here, but however, we will go ahead and hit all of the above as the answer. Yes, and here you will go to UPSC official answer key and see what UPSC's opinion is as per this statement. Okay. So, here you have to go with the UPSC's trend. So, no matter if you commit mistake in this attempt, in the next attempt, if any such words come, lethal quantities or any such things come, then you will make sure that you will hit as per UPSC. Okay. So, here again, uh, we are going and attempting this as all of the above, then we will see. Then, come to next, with reference to furnace oil, consider the following statements. So, it is a product of oil refineries, then some industries use it to generate power, some industries may use, then its use causes sulfur emissions to environment. So, all statements are moderate. So, I am not uh, seeing any uh, lethal or anything of such extreme words. So, all of the above can be a formidable answer. Yes, go ahead and hit it. Do not waste too much of time in moderate statements. Then, what is blue carbon, but obvious carbon sequester, sequestered in the oceans, ocean ecosystem. So, oceans and coastal ecosystem, hit it. Do not waste so much of time in easy questions. Then, in the nature, which of the following is or are most likely to be found? Sur uh, surviving on the surface without soil. So, here 
फ्रेंड्स ऑलमोस्ट ऑल कैन सर्वाइव ऑन बेर रॉक्स एंड फॉर दैट मैटर इवन ट्रीज विल ग्रो ऑन रॉक्स यस यू सी पीपल ट्री दे विल ग्रो इन बिल्डिंग्स यस सो हियर द क्वेश्चन इज बिट सब्जेक्टिव इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द एग्जामिनर्स मैंड सेट ऑल्सो बट हब अबर वी ट्राई मैक्सिमम एंड वी विल ट्राई टू जीरो इन ऑन एनी वन सी मशरूम्स यू नो दैट मशरूम्स आर डेटिटिव वॉरस सो इवन ऑन डेड एनिमल्स सो दे कैन लिव यस सो वी विल टेक मशरूम एज अ करेक्ट आंसर एंड वी सी वेरी इज फोर ऑप्शन सो वन एंड फोर ओनली एंड वन थ्री एंड फोर ओनली सो इवन इफ यू लिव अ डेड डॉग एंड इफ यू कवर गुड इफ यू प्रोवाइड सम मॉइस्चर सो ऑन दैट मशरूम्स विल ग्रो यस एंड सो हियर थ्री इज द ओनली वन which we are going to search so third one moss yes so moss is a very primitive one it is like algae yes so bit mature compared to algae and mosses you have seen they are growing on the rocks they are growing on the compound walls if you construct them if you go to coastal areas almost all compound wall will be having mosses yes so we go and hit 1 3 and 4 as the answer yes so lichens we are leaving as of the options are concerned but lichens are also uh, lichens can also live without soils we have seen lichens floating on water we can see lichens floating on the uh, on the rocks growing on the rocks etc but anyway we will go with options we will see what upsc does yes so we are going to hit 1 3 and 4 option here then come to next which one of the following is used in preparing a natural mosquito repellent yes so friends what is a mosquito repellent so you have known about odonil or odomos so why it is a mosquito repellent because it is having a strong smell so if someone is applying odomos then you will know the smell in all through the surrounding area so in one room if your roommate applies then the whole building will be having that smell whole floor will be having that smell so that stinking smell is the main characteristic of mosquito repellent so here which of the following might have a stinking smell so lemon grass is one which has a stinking lemon like smell that is why the name lemon grass lemon grass we is not like it will leave lemon there so it is called so because it has that lemon like smell yes when we squeeze that le lemons uh, peel we get that smell and the uh, scent blooming so that is why we can take a crude guess that lemon grass if you know the characteristic of odomos and odonil so this is how your thought process should go odomos odonil the stinking smell and the lemon grass so hit this option so here a guess work good guess work has happened so search from the practical ground reality then come to next consider the following kinds of organisms copepods cyanobacteria diatoms and foraminifera which of the above are primary product producers in food chains of oceans so friends primary producers in oceans means either they have to be photosynthetic or they have to be chemosynthetic yes so photosynthesis and chemosynthesis photosynthesis happens mostly in algae and plants chemosynthesis happens mostly in monera protista and others yes so now cyanobacteria is a blue green algae we have studied in ncert so this can be a formidable option diatoms are also green in color so this can be a formidable option too yes so but friends so if you have not read ncerts what will you do see copepod what is poda what is arthropoda arthropoda means jointed legs yes so jointed legs will be having only for the organisms which can move so the legs are very matured ones so they will be most probably animals and animals which are able to move so no nature has given them the ability to either photosynthesize or chemosynthesize so the ability to move is given only because they will search their food and eat that is why they cannot be the primary producers 
yes. So, 1 cannot be an option, strike it down here, you get only 2 and 3 and 3 and 4, yes. So, here 2 should always be there, we know that cyanobacteria means blue green algae. So, 2 and 3 will be the formidable option, yes. So, go with the words and whenever you read biology and CRT, do not neglect the scientific names. So, they will come to handy like this. So, what is the meaning of arthropoda? What is the meaning of echinodermata? So, echinodermata, echinoderma means uh, spiny skin. So, skin made up of thorns, yes. So, likewise, then consider the following animals hedgehog, marmot, and pangolin. To reduce the chance of being captured by predators, which of the above rolls up and protects from their vulnerable parts? Again, friends, it is dependent on luck, yes. So, here if you have seen all these, then you will hit it, else you will not hit at all. So, most probably you might be knowing pangolin, but the option 3 only is also there, yes. So, you can attempt it or as far as my knowledge, better not to. So, we are leaving totally 4 questions as of now and we are somewhere around 20, 25. So, out of 25 questions, we have left only 4. So, not a big issue. So, leave this question, but anyway, if you go and see in the internet, so any of these uh, options will be there and we have also done it and people who have internet and book, they have also done that. So, better leave this, it is a dangerous question to take a guesswork here, because we have to take crude guesswork only, no hints available, only three words are there. Okay, then come to next, with reference to New York declaration of forest which of the following statements are correct. First one, it was first endorsed at the United Nations Climate Summit in 2014. So, here we have some ambiguity. So, if this year is changed, then the statement might go wrong. Then, it endorses global timeline to end the loss of forests, but obvious every convention, every framework, it will be having one timeline. So, by 2030, we are going to do this by 2050, we are going to do this. So, anything of such sort will happen, yes. So, this can be formidable option. Then, it is a legal binding international declaration. So, legally binding, not all conventions are legally binding. So, till now only we have Montreal protocol which is legally binding, others are not legally binding. So, legally binding means if you violate, so any nation can take you to the court of law. So, nothing of such sort is possible for others, only for Montreal protocol it was. Okay, so, this is wrong. So, legally binding is one statement which UPSC often leaves when it comes to the international framework and convention like questions. Then, it is endorsed by the governments, big companies and indigenous communities. So, but obvious they will be endorsed by so many nations, so many communities, so many corporates. So, it would be a formidable option. Then, India was one of the signatories at its inception. So, here at its inception is extreme. So, India will never sign an agreement just by giving the paper. So, by seeing that yes, okay, done. So, India has never done it in its history. India will, uh, India will be the last nation for anything. So, just like we did in Glasgow, paisa do 1 trillion, only then we will sign. So, such things India will always do and it is wise to do also. Yes, again this is an extreme. So, cut these two and we will go for the options. Yes, so 3 should not be there, this and this eliminated, 5 should not be there. Again, 5 should not be there, this eliminated, 1, 2 and 4 only. Yes, so this can be formidable option, 3, 3, then 5, 5, cut down. Okay. So, 1, 2 and 4 formidable option. So, this is how you will hit guessworks. Then come to next, magnetite particles suspected to cause neurodegenerative problems are generated as environment pollutants of which of the following. So, again here, friends, magnetite means iron ore, yes. So, magnetite pollution happens only when two big iron metals, they rub each other. So, and magnetite pollution is something where that is done to a large extent, to a considerable extent. So, here we are going for only those, where two metal irons are rubbing 
profoundly and we exclude all those small small metal equipments. So, brakes of motor vehicles very first thing see if you claim KSRTC buses or any other BMTC DTC buses. So, government buses. So, you will feel one now uh, smell the clutch smell because they will not be oiled properly. Yes. So, that you will feel the same smell if you do not service your cars. Yes. And then engines of motor vehicles, but obvious these are the main things that smell itself is magnetic pollution that iron iron smell you will feel that itself causes vomiting sensation if you do journey. Yes. So, but obvious uh, we are habituated. So, people in rich classes uh, they feel that then microwave stoves within homes. So, friends microwaves. So, they are running on the microwave electricity some small gadgets will be there one glass casing will be there and small metals will be there. So, I do not think their irons will rub to create microwaves. So, this cannot be formidable option then power plants. So, in power plants the turbine big iron turbines will be rotating yes. So, there some uh, irons might rub each other. So, this can be formidable then telephone lines. So, telephone lines they will be made up of alloys not only of magnetite. So, iron per se will not be there and rubbing will also not be there in that. Okay. So, we can exclude this also. So, now by excluding 3 and 5 we look at. So, 5 we eliminated. Okay. So, if we eliminate 5 we are left with only 1, 2 and 4. Yes. So, we got what we wanted. So, B can be the formidable option. So, do not blindly hit all of the above. So, give first preference to concepts. So, this we learned from the last UPSC answer key. Yes. So, they are not all questions are all of the above. Update your guessing strategies. Okay, done. Next one, which one of the following is a filter feeder? Again, friends, so this depends on luck, and moreover, if you go and see the internet, almost all are filter feeders. Okay, so this involves subjectivity, but obvious uh, people are saying oysters the as the uh, sole filter feeders. But anyway, we are going to leave this. So, our total questions added up to 5. So, 5 questions we are leaving. Yes, then come to next. In case of which one of the following biochemical cycles, weathering of rocks is the main source of release of nutrient into the cycle. So, here friends one cycle means it takes sources from all, all forms of environment. So, from atmosphere, from water, from soil from rocks everywhere. So, now the question is which of them will take solely from rocks? If rocks are not there this cycle will not exist at all. So, we have to analyze on those lines. So, take this carbon cycle friends we have plants and plants they will be giving out and absorbing carbon dioxide. So, most of the carbon dioxide is present in atmosphere. So, atmosphere is the main source for carbon cycle, not the weathering of rocks. So, this we cut it, then nitrogen cycle. So, nitrogen itself is abundant in atmosphere. So, approximately 78 percent is nitrogen. So, we cut it off, then phosphorus cycle. So, friends to go to atmosphere, we should have phosphorus pentoxide P 2 O 5. So, formation of phosphorus pentoxide is rare. So, it is not so easy because this is a heavy molecule. So, most of the things has to come from phosphorus rocks only. Okay. So, this can be a formidable option. Then we go for sulfur. So, sulfur friends we have sulfur oxides, sulfur dioxides, we have inside ocean we have sulfuric acid. So, in water air both sulfur cycle can survive, but phosphorus cycle can survive only with the help of phosphorus rocks. Yes. So, even phosphoric acid is also difficult to be formed. So, basic NCRT concept yes. So, we are going to tick C as the option. Then come to next which one of the following are detritivorous? orous. So, which will survive on dead and decayed particles. So, here earthworms, but obvious they are detritivorous. orous. So, here eliminate one. So, eliminate option which does not have one. Yes. So, B is not having one then jellyfish we do not know millipedes we know. Yes, millipedes are the ones which have millions of legs and once we touch it will 
crawl it will crawl like this but of yes it will be in detritus yes so wherever we have uh, some dead and decayed matters some cow dung etc millipedes will be common so we will see three so where we don't have three we eliminate so we have left with only c and d yes so now d as 1 2 3 4 5 so we have to check for 2 and 4 so 2 and 4 friends if you have found sea horse sea horse is found only in clean waters so if you see the photo of clean sea horses so they are never found in dirty waters they are never found in murkier waters so they will eat on algae they will eat on zooplanktons they will eat on other smaller organisms they will not eat detritus so if they had eaten detritus so sea horse they would have been made the dirty water as the habitat no so that is why sea horse we will cut it down and we take 1 3 and 5 as the option and wood lice wood lice what obvious lice they will feed on the decayed uh, parts of our head so they also suck some blood also but however in the wood lice wood uh, the decayed wood will be consumed by these wood lices yes so thereby we will zero in on 1 3 and 5 so one small hint required here is you should have seen the pictures of sea horses in the uh, childhood or either while studying the environment and ecology so while studying environment and ecology if you come across new species go to internet and see its pictures so that will come for your guessing strategy so i have seen i have hit it so i am claiming this but whether you claim it or not it's left to you then 29th one the common carbon metric supported by unep has been developed for so here metric means something where we assess we measure so we find for assessment but all options have assessing word so here assessing is there assessing is there then assess is there so we don't have any luck favoring in our side so we go through assessing the carbon footprint of the building operation around the world enabling commercial farming entities around the world to enter the carbon emission trading enabling governments to assess the overall carbon footprint caused by their countries assessing the overall carbon so all are very very uh, tight so if you have known about the carbon common metric you will hit else will not so we are not going to claim it so we are going to leave it so take that we have left six questions in all in this okay so make sure that this one is the answer so again you do this program one week one website program and see that unep dtu partnership website so recently denmark technical university has partnered with the unep and it is coming up with some creative projects so go to unep dtu website and see you will get the carbon common metric and that is related to the building codes so the building operations yes so do it then come to next which of the following have species that can establish symbiotic symbiotic relation with other organisms friends here but obvious you have to have the knowledge like most of our species in the world have not known at all so most of the things we are not being able to discover at all yes so the very question says can establish so can means there might be some nidarians and cylindrates so they might be having symbiotic relationships fungi we know yes so lichens is algae and fungi symbiosis protozoans so several uh, euglenoids they are in symbiotic re relationships so that word can and the disadvantage of proof so not many organizations have discovered at all so we don't have that proof that this will not be associated with symbiosis at all so we have no such proofs so that's why take the advantage of this that is the disadvantage of proof and hit 1 2 and 3 only as the answer yes so who knows in future some nidarians might be found if not now so there will be if not then in future also it is possible okay so 
hit likewise. So, this will be more formidable option. Then 31 with reference to Chausat Yogini temple situated near Morena consider the following. So, it is a so again friends a difficulty level is more. So, neither present in NCRT nor in good books R.S. Sharma nothing. So, purely guesswork. Chausat Yogini temple situated near Morena consider the following it is a circular temple built during the reign of Kacha Pagata dynasty do not know do not no issues read with next one do not leave this question it is the only circular temple built in India. So, mark this word only we have got one hint then it was meant to promote Vaishnava cult friends this is a yogini temple yogis and yoginis. So, Pragya Yogi Jyotish or Yogi Adityanath. So, these are the devotees of Shiv, Shiva. So, they cannot be Vaishnavites. It will not promote Vaishnava cult, it will promote only Shaiva cult because it is a Yogini temple. Yes. So, look for eliminating 3. We have only 2 options 1 and 2 only and 1 and 4 only. So, we have already eliminated 2 because it is the only circular need not be. So, 1 and 4 as the option. So, hit with a guesswork. Okay. So, do it. Then come to next. Which one of the following ancient towns is well known for its elaborate system of water harvesting and management by building a series of dams and channelizing water into connected reservoirs. So, in NCITs we have reservoir at Dolavira. Yes. So, this is how the dams and reservoirs are being constructed. So, we will take Dolavira as the option here. Yes. So, we go with the NCRTs. Okay. Some have given Kalibangan as the answer. So, we will claim with the NCRTs. We will claim till the end Dolavira as the answer. Okay. We will see what UPSC says, but no issues. Anyway, uh, we do not want uh, no 180, 190 here. We are just uh, wanting for 120, 130. So, we hit this as Dolavira. Then, in the first quarter of 17th century, in which of the following was or were the factory or factories of the East India Company located? So, friends, do not leave the question by seeing itself. Okay. So, 17th century means which year? 17th century means 1600 to 17. 1700 not 1700 1699. So, this is the time period. So, in this time period East India company had only relation with Mughals no one else. So, they did not contact any others they had only Mughals and they were still in this Arabian seashores. So, they were fighting with the Muslim merchants they were fighting with various others Dutchess and Denmarks etcetera in the sea itself they have never entered to the eastern coast at all. Yes. So, they started slowly entering after 1700. So, 1700 they started entering here in Bengal and then Siraju Dawala's issue happened in 1730s and then 1750s battle of Plassey happened. Yes. So, go through the timeline and here again not so crude like 1, 2 and 3 option is given. So, the date and the options they show that only in broach yes because Trichinopoli and Chikakol they are in eastern India Chikakol, Srikakulam, Odisha, Trichinopoli, Tiruchirapalli very much below south India yes. So, take it as a crude guess in broach. So, but here risk is there ok. So, no issues go and hit it yes. So, we will claim it that we are going to attempt, but we are taking the chance as 50 50 we are not taking that this will become correct for sure. Okay. So, do it one only will be the formidable option. So, at least this thought process if you do yes then you are deserved to attempt this question yes then come to next from the decline of Guptas till the rise of Harshavardhana in the early 17th, 7th century, which of the following kingdoms were holding power in North India. So, 
Harsha came in 7th century that is 600 CE. So, Guptas they were out in somewhere around 200 CE. So, from 200 to 700 who were ruling. Okay. So, friends here Paramaras of Malwa. So, Paramaras of Malwa they are basically belonging to or nearer to Rajputs. So, Rajputs they came in medieval India. They never came in this period. Yes. So, Paramaras of Malwa we will cut it out and we will see which all options will get cut out. So, we have only 2, 1, 3, 4, 6 and 5 and 6. Yes. So, if you have any one idea like after Guptas, Guptas of Magadha came. Okay. So, you would have straight away hit 1, 3, 4 and 6 as the option. But anyway, we will see 5 and 6 also. Yadavas and Maitrakas of Valabi. Friends, here Yadavas, we have this in NCRT. We have the coins of Yadavas in 6th or 7th NCRT. Yes, so there. So, you can see that they were in somewhere around not 11th or 12th century. So, that is why Yadavas will not be the option. So, 1, 3, 4 and 6 will be the formidable option. Yes. So, whenever you study history from now on, you have to be thorough with the dates. If you are not thorough with the dates, then there are chances of you going wrong many times. Yes. So, here we are going to hit 1, 3, 4 and 6, then come to next. According to Portuguese writer Nunes, the woman in Vijayanagara Empire were expert in which of the following areas. Again, a tough question, we do not know. Yes. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, all of the above is option. So, go ahead and hit it. Okay. We cannot say something is excluded because we do not have his book right now. We only have various historians who have claimed that he has written. So, who knows if some other historian claims that yes, he has written all these, then our answer will go wrong if we hit any other option. So, hit all of the above, take risk, no issues. Yes, then coming to next. With reference to Madanapalle of Andhra Pradesh, which one of the following are correct? Again, friends, people they say they say that this is not from NCRT, BP Chandra, etc. So, this I have taken from Indian Express. Indian Express explained column. Yes. So, whenever some crucial dates come, you have to go through this article, Indian Express explained column. So, it is a very, very important editorial column, Indian Express explained. And they explain the things very beautifully also. Nice one. So, this is a current affairs question. And Rabindranath Tagore, he had gone there for some work and there he translated national anthem. So, that is why Madanapalle is famous. Yes, we are going to claim this because this is a current affairs, you had to do it. So, at least you are spending uh, one, one and a half hour for newspaper. So, spend some 15 more minutes on this Indian Express explained column. Then come to next, consider the following. So, Burza home, rocket shrines, Chandra Ketugar, Terracotta, Ganeshwar, copper artifacts. So, here we have in the NCITs, there is evidence in K3 area of what archaeologists call Ganeshwar Jodhpura culture. Yes. So, they have uh, unusual wealth of copper objects. So, Ganeshwar Jodhpura culture is present in NCIT. So, Ganeshwar copper artifacts will be the correct answer. So, here we go for the three option. So, C and D will be the formidable ones. So, now we search for two. Chandra Ketugar terracotta. Friends, what is terracotta? Terracotta is something made of clay and clay is present everywhere. You see Harappa, you see uh, uh, Maski of Karnataka, you see Chelas, Choras, Pandyas. So, everywhere you can see terracotta figurines, terracotta toys, etc. So, you cannot say terracotta soil made artifacts will never be there. Yes, so that will be but obvious be there everywhere. So, we hit 2 and 3 as the formidable option. Yes, so this will be a direct question from NCIT then. Coming to next. Consider the following statement. It was during the reign of Iltamish that Chinggis Khan reached the Indus in pursuit of fugitive Khwarizm prince. Then, 
it was during the reign of Muhammad bin Tughlaq that Taimur occupied Multan and crossed the Indus. Again, friends, you have to be thorough with the dates. Yes, so Taimur Lem came at the point where Tughlaqs were declining and Lodhis were rising. Okay, so make sure that you will remember these facts. So such facts you have to underline and remember. Yes, so somewhere around Nuzrat Khan. Tughlaq, Nuzrat Tughlaq, some last king of Tughlaq dynasty was ruling. By seeing that and taking it as an opportunity, Taimur Lem came and he attacked. Yes, so when that is the case here, this we are going to strike out. So, strike out 2, we are going to have only 2 that is 1 and 3. So, either 1 only or 3 only. Then third one, it was during the reign of Devaraya II of Vijayanagara Empire that Vasco da Gama reached the coast of Kerala. So, here this is a South Indian. So, almost all South Indian people they would have been known this and almost all North Indian people they would have known this properly. So, UPSC is giving equal importance to everyone in this. Anyway, this we have studied in NCRTs. So, make a habit of studying Satish Chandra world NCRT. So, if you had studied, but obvious this is not a big problem at all. Yes, so we are going to take one only as the option because Devaraya was not the ruler. Okay, so Devaraya was uh, much earlier. Yes, Narasaraya was the ruler, I guess, when Vasco de Gama came. Okay, so again with R.S. Sharma with new NCRTs make habit of reading Satish Chandra, old NCRTs for ancient and medieval India. Last time also I spoke, some two to three questions came. Yes, so this year also they have come. Then come to next. Consider the following statements. St. Francis Xavier was one of the founding members of GCF order. St. Francis Xavier died in Goa and the church is dedicated to him there. The feast of St. Francis Xavier, Xavier is celebrated in Goa each year. Friends, again I have taken from Indian Express. Okay. So, in the Indian Express, it is clearly explained that in later 1635, an Italian Jesuit priest who believed it was St. Xavier that saved him decided to procure an upper cast of casket. So, I brought some other paragraph, I guess. Okay. So, now here it is. In 1624, the body of saint was brought from St. Paul's Church, then in Portuguese, to Basilica of Bone of Jesus. Yes. So, he did not die in Goa. So, he was, he died in China and then his body went to Portugal and then his body came to Goa. Yes. So, you read this whole article, again make a habit of reading Indian Express, explained column. Okay, many questions have been appearing from here. Yes, so if you have read that, so you have eliminated 2. So, if you eliminate 2 only, C will be the correct option. So, here I do not want, you do not get the guesswork also. So, here the current affairs hard work is what that matters. Then come to next, 48th one, with reference to the history of ancient India, which of the following is or are correct? Mitakshar was the civil law for the upper caste and Dayabhaga was the civil law for the lower castes. Then in Mitakshara system, the sons can claim right to the property during the lifetime of father, whereas Dayabhaga it is only after the death of the father that the sons can claim the right to the property. Then Mitakshara system deals with the matters related to the property held by male members only of a family, whereas Dayabhaga system deals with matters related to the property held by both male and female members of a family. Friends, it is not present in NCRTs, very difficult, but go with the meaning of word Mitakshar and Dayabhaga. So, Mitakshar means
जो मिट गए हैं उनका अक्षर जो मिट गए हैं उनका अक्षर एंड दया बागा दया बागा मीन्स द बाग गिवन आउट ऑफ दया आउट ऑफ काइंडनेस यस सो हियर बाय टेकिंग दिस वी कैन सी दैट हियर इन मिटाक्षर सिस्टम सन कैन क्लेम द राइट्स टू प्रॉपर्टी ड्यूरिंग द लाइफ टाइम ऑफ द फादर वेर एज इन दया बागा इट इज ओनली आफ्टर द डेथ ऑफ द फादर दैट द सन्स कैन क्लेम राइट टू द प्रॉपर्टी सो हियर दया बागा मीन्स समथिंग लाइक आफ्टर द डेथ ऑफ द फादर आउट ऑफ काइंडनेस द प्रॉपर्टी गोस टू हिम द दया बागा यस सो समेर अराउंड लाइक वाइज वी ट्राइड गेसिंग बट द गेसिंग वॉज नॉट पॉसिबल एनी वे बट my hint is that whenever such art and culture questions come you have to make sure that the words meaning are taken so we are going to leave this question so this adds up to some seven questions we left till now but the thing is that that mitakshara and daya baga you have to make sure that the words meaning you will hit it yes so here we tried but analysis couldn't match it so no issues okay we move on okay seven we have left then With reference to the history of ancient India, Baba Bhuti, Hasti Mala and Chhema Shura were famous for. Friends, we all know that Baba Bhuti is Uttar Ram Charita. Yes, Uttar Ram Charita was a playwright. Yes, but obvious. And if you had read Satish Chandra or R. S. Sharma or any other book on ancient and medieval India, you would have known this. Baba Bhuti, Uttar Ram Charita, then Hasti Mala and Chhema Shura, they were also playwrights. So, you can. Go with B option, an easy question. Then consider the following statements: The Montego Chamfron reforms of 1919 recommended granting voting rights to all women of the above 21 years of age. Then Government of India Act of 1935 gave women reserved seats in legislature. Friends, these are not present in Spectrum and Lakshmi Kant, so they are in depth. So. Better leave this question, or you can maximum see that all women, and then women deserved seats. But anyway, history it is very difficult to take a guess. Also, we are going to leave this, and totally we have attempted eight questions. Ah, uh, we have left eight questions out of forty-two. Then come to next. With reference to eighth August nineteen forty-two in Indian history, which one of the following statement is correct? So friends, but obvious this is a Gowalia tank incident. So this is Quit India declaration. So but obvious no price for guessing a factual question. Then come to next. Who among the following is associated with the songs from prison? A translation of ancient Indian religious lyrics in English. Yes. So again a very very uh, tricky question. Okay. So we are going to leave this as well. We have left totally. Nine questions as of now. Yes. Then come to next. With reference to medieval India, which one of the following is the correct sequence in ascending order in terms of size? So, Subha Sarkar and Paraganas. We have in Satish Chandra N C R T. We have in Arash Sharma also an easy question. So, C will be the option. No price for guessing here. Then, who among the following was associated with? The Bethum School. Bethum School is given in Bipin Chandra N C R T. Yes, it is given in Spectrum also. Isu Chandra Vidya Sagar. An easy question. Again, no price for guessing here. Then come to next. In the context of colonial India, Shah Nawaz Khan, Prem Kumar Singh Sagal, Gurbakh Singh Dilon. Again, I N A trials. Easy question. No price for guessing. So where is I N A trials? Officers of Indian National Army. Then. Forty-eighth, with reference to Indian history, which of the following statement is or are correct? The Nizamat of Arcot emerged out of Hyderabad state. Then Mysore Kingdom emerged out of Vijayanagara Empire. Then Rohilkand Kingdom was formed out of territories occupied by Ahmad Shah Durrani. Yes, so friends, here Ahmad Shah Durrani is nothing but Ahmad Shah Abdali. Yes, so. Here somewhere, Ahmad Shah Abdali, he didn't occupy any territory, so he left 
his army people to go on a rampage on india so to uh, to kill people he want to rape so every freedom was given and so you can make sure that so no army was conquered by amar shah abdali after battle of panipat so you can eliminate three so if you eliminate three one and two and two only will remain yes so going to one as option nizamat of our court emerge out of hyderabad yes we know that only nizam ul mulk asaf ja so he went and started hyderabad so after that our court carnatic everything came up so again this is a correct option and mysore kingdom s yes, from vijayanagara even today kempe gowda of kempe gowda international airport so kempe gowda was a officer in vijayanagara kingdom's dynasty yes so they have the origin so one and two only can be the formidable option so here make sure that amar shah durani or amar shah abdali he didn't conquer any thing he just uh, took so much of war beauty a uh, war booty not beauty okay and he uh, left from india yes so if you have that fact in your brain then you can take a crude guess of it okay so we are going to attempt this then come to next which one of the following statements is correct ajanta caves lie in the gorge of vagora sanchi stupa lies in the gorge of chambal river then panduleni caves lie in the gorge of narmada river amravati stupa lies in the gorge of godavari river again friends here you have to eliminate 3 to 0 in to any one okay we we'll see sanchi stupa lies on the gorge of chambal river so all are very tight options so if you are from geography optional you are going to hit them else you require knowledge because every option you want to eliminate them it requires knowledge so if you have the hard work you are going to hit it else we are going to leave it so till now we have left some 10 questions okay we are somewhere around 50 and most of the history questions we have uh, seen here so there is no wrong in uh, leaving 10 questions okay so we will leave this we will move ahead then fifth one consider the following statements 21st february is declared to be the international mother language day by unicef so friends unicef is children's emergency fund so why will children's body will cater to mother language other language is nothing but a language is related to the cultural heritage so heritage means always unesco will come unicef will not come yes so with that you eliminate this so if you eliminate this two only and neither so either of them will remain the demand that bangla has to be one of the national languages was raised in the constituent assembly of pakistan so but obvious so this might be one of the reasons why bangladesh split out from pakistan yes so we can hit it so take a crude guess because it syncs with our perception yes and our knowledge of history so go ahead and hit two only as the answer